1 Kings chapter 9. And it came to pass when Solomon had finished the building of the house of the Lord and the king's house and all Solomon's desire which he which he was placed to do, pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time as he appeared unto him at Gibeon. Well, Solomon has had this great prayer of dedication. He's offered all these sacrifices and God's returned to him. And the Lord said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication. God hears that thou hast made before me. I have hallowed holy this house, which thou hast built to put my name there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Now that's what everybody would want about their church building. But this is only the one ever building God says it's about. And Oh, I wish God would speak and answer my prayers. He does. Yes. No. Not now. You want that audio voice from God without the Bible. That's not the Bible. And if you want that audio, bi that audio Bible voice of God to speak to you. From Genesis to Malachi. And through the, through the Gospels. And going to the close of the book of Acts. There were precepts and statutes and commandments that were to be followed that the church age doesn't have. As the church age today, on this side of Calvary, we live by faith. All right. Solomon, this is the second time something has happened to Solomon that's never happened to me as a born again Bible believing Christian. Solomon can tell you what the sound of God sounds like. Solomon can say, I prayed this prayer and God answered me and God said I heard I have heard thy prayer and thy supplication. I've never heard that Now I can acknowledge that God has heard some of my prayers and answered some of my prayers And there have been people come up to me if you show me God if God would speak to me if God would do some wonderful great thing in my life And I've only got one thing to answer to that actually two things Solomon is going to get married to, to a thousand wives and they're going to bring him away from God. Hearing God's voice did not keep him right with God. The nation of Israel, they're at Mount Horeb. That's where the law gives them, Exodus 20. God speaks those Ten Commandments orally. And their entire walk in the wilderness is just upsetting God, upsetting Moses. So if you were to hear God, if you were to see God, if you were to get the presence of God, that would not give you the right to say you would walk faithfully. Because I believe Jesus is God. I believe God is Jesus. And three and a half years public ministry of Jesus Christ. Walking and talking and seeing Jesus and getting your eyes open, getting your ears open, getting healed of leprosy, getting that you now can use your hands. And at the end of his ministry, after seeing Jesus, after hearing Jesus, they gave him the cross. And even his own disciples walked and talked with John. His testimony, we touched him, we heard him, we ate with him. I put my ear to the breast and heart of God. And when I stood at that cross with Jesus and his mother Mary, there were no other disciples there with me. They walked with Jesus. They talked with Jesus. We're going to Jerusalem. They're going to kill me. They're going to spit upon me. They're going to abuse me. For three days, I'm going to rise from the grave. They're going to do all this to me. I'm going to die. I'm coming up from the grave. How many of those disciples were there on Sunday morning waiting to see that rocket roll away? Hey, come on, guys. You say he's going to come from the grave. All right, let's sit here and watch it. None. None at all. And if thou wilt walk before me, he won't. As David thy father walked, David sinned. Look at that. We have come, David's been dead. Solomon's over the kingdom. David committed adultery, committed the murder. And God says, if you walk like David did, your father, 
He loved me with his heart. He desired the best for me. And in his troubles, he sought me. He had two times he could have killed his enemy, but he says, hey, that is God's anointed. I'm not going to do it. And I, I, he cut off the, the skirt one day, and that man just tore his heart in pieces. Because I set that man to the throne. I gave that man the kingdom. As David. Now, David... With Solomon as an example, David was the father of Solomon. Fathers are to be an example for their children to walk. And fathers today are lousy if there's even a father. David, thy father, walked in integrity of heart, heart, heart. That's why God loved David, the heart. The flesh, well, that sin. And in uprightness. To do according to all that I have commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my judgments. He won't. Then I will establish the throne of thy kingdom upon Israel forever. In that condition I will establish if, verse 4, if forever, as I promised David thy father, saying, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. Okay, we got a problem. Go to Jeremiah 22. Jeremiah 22, 29. We got a big problem. We got a contradiction. And it's amazing how God answered this contradiction. Contradiction in the Bible? Some say there is. There are lists of contradictions. Jeremiah 22, 29. Now, as you turn to Jeremiah 22, I'm going to read this again. There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. Ready? Jeremiah 22, 20. Oh, earth, earth, earth. Three times. Hear the word of the Lord. This is spoken to the earth. Not just Jews. Thus saith the Lord. Look at it. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Twice the word of God. Write ye this man, Kaniah, Childless, a man that shall not prosper in his days. For no man of his seed, no children, shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruin any more in Judah. That is the break of the kings of Israel and Judah. I mean, Israel as the entire name. That's it. When Kaniah dies, that's it. There is no more kingdom. God says, I've had it with you. I've had it with you children of David. I had it with you Judah. When that man dies, it's done. But 1 Kings 9, God tells Solomon, There shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel. Kaniah dies and there has not ever since to be a king. I believe they have a prime minister today. I think that's who, uh, I can't think of his name now. They don't have a president. They don't have a queen. They don't have a king. But Jesus, upon his cross, said, King of the Jews. Jesus is going to come and take that throne of David. How can you do that? Jeremiah 22, 29 and 30, 1 Kings 9, 5. And Isaiah 7.14. That's the virgin birth. And the way that Jesus gets that throne back, that Kaniah, that God says, Oh, earth, 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 right this man childish. That Joseph, Matthew 1, is the line of the kings of Israel. Mary, Luke chapter 2, is the line of David, but not the kings. Joseph adopts Jesus, and adoption has more rights than a natural child because I am born of Satan, John 8 44. And when I received Christ as my Savior through the Holy Spirit, I became adopted to God. I can cry out, Abba, Father. Now, I was not born of God, I was born in sin. God is holy. 
And I know in the state of Connecticut, as far as adoption, that adopted child has more right to your will than any natural child. So when you see that upon the throne uh, forever, David, there's going to be a man to sit on your throne. And then from Kaniah unto present day, there is no throne. There is no kingdom. Luke chapter 1. We'll let the Holy Spirit fill in the gaps. Luke chapter 1, verse 27. And you need to go read Matthew 1. And you, let me sure get, you go to Luke 1, make sure I get this genealogy. It's, I think it's 2 or 3. The genealogy of Mary is Luke 3. But Luke chapter 1, verse 27. To a virgin, a spouse, a spouse to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor of God with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. Ready, here we go. Bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great. He shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Problem. Jeremiah said, you write that man childless. No one on his seed, no one of that man is ever going to have a throne. The angel Gabriel says he's going to sit on David's throne. Let's keep reading. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob. Impossible, Jeremiah says. And his kingdom... There shall be no end. Well, that's what it said in Kings. We got a big contradiction. All right, Mary, help us. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? I'm a virgin. The angel answered, Come on, angel. And said unto the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. There's that earth, 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 right that man child is. Solomon, forever upon that throne is going to be the seed of David. But I curse that seed. Mary says, hey, I have not been with my husband. I have not been with any man at all. But that's the one who's going to sit on the, on the throne of David. Forever, the angel said. Matt, okay, this one came to Matthew, i got to find. Matthew 1, verse 18. That's what I don't have in my notes, but let's, let's look at the virgin birth is the answer to Kaniah being cursed of his children never to be seated in that throne. Matthew 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. This is the wisdom of Jesus. When as his mother Mary was the spouse of Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. That's what we just read in Luke. The virgin conceived without a man. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, hey, my, Mary's been fooling around on me. That woman is pregnant and it's not me was minded to put her away privily, privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, so he, the throne, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall save it. So how did God, in his anger, say, all right, I curse Coniah. I'm angry with that guy. And in Jeremiah 22, 29, and 30, I said, no man is going to sit on that throne with you anymore, sir. Your wickedness and your sin, done. 
And then it would be like, well, how is David going to get that promise by God? I'll tell you exactly how it's going to happen. I cursed that childhood. I cursed that seed of that man. I will have a virgin give birth to a man. I will conceive in that womb by the Holy Ghost. And that child that born of Mary, who are both of David, her husband who will adopt Jesus, are of David, the lineage of David. Because when the taxation has come and Jesus is to be born, he is to be born in Bethlehem, the city of David. That's how God did it. So what Solomon said, when he says to Solomon, there shall not fail thee a man upon the throne of Israel, he has no idea what anything about Jeremiah. And then when Jeremiah writes this, I don't know if Jeremiah realizes that, well, wait a minute, there's supposed to be a king forever of David. Isaiah will help you on that one. Gabriel will help you on that one. You just got to wait a little time. So God is wonderful. And what prevented was the sin of man. But if ye, if conditional, that if goes against Calvinism because it's free will. If you go down the road and you take a right, you are not knowing where you want to go. If you go down the road and you take a left, that will get you to where you're going. If you keep on going with the diet that you're eating, sir, you're going for poor health. But if you were to clean up your diet a little bit, eat a little more good food, but if he shall at all turn from following me, now that's a reverse repentance. <laughs> that's You're following God, then you turn from God. Ye or your children... And will not keep my commandments and my statutes, which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods, Solomon will, and worship them. Wait till you see what the condition of Judah and the temple is by the time of Kaniah. Man, they during the time of the kings of Judah, they're peeling the gold off the doors and giving it to other countries. They are locking that place up. They are shutting that place up. They're bringing idols and worship and burning incense to other gods. They've got on top of the temple star worship. They've got on every street corner, every kind of church of every religion, Jeremiah says. They even got a tree decorated with, with silver and gold. And they're making little cakes to the queen of heaven. They got steeples that represent the male deity they're worshiping the sun, the male deity, and the moon, the female deity, and the little stars. Man, they're just all involved in witchcraft and, and all kinds of sins. By the time Jeremiah. And when Kaniah steps on the thing, Judah's just wicked. And God's like, that's it, I'm done. I've had it with you. They're in sodomy. They're lying, they're stealing. They're killing God's prophets. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land. Go into Babylon captivity. Jeremiah. Jeremiah is in prison. When Nebuchadnezzar finally comes and destroys the whole city. They pull Jeremiah out of the city. They give him a reward. They give him wages. They say, listen, you can go back with us if you want. Or you can stay here if you want. It's up to you. Here's some food. And they destroy Jerusalem. That's it the king. Land which I have given them, and this house, which I have hallowed for my name, will I cast out of my sight. It's gone. When they're in Babylon, this is gone. Solomon just built the place. It's a oh, fresh building smell. Oh, isn't that great? And can you imagine God answering Solomon by dream? He's laying there. I don't know how well he's asleep in there. He says, if you sin against me, this house is gone. Lord, I just built it for you. This is what the desire of my father was. This house. You're saying you're going to take it away? Absolutely. God gave the warning. Uh, let me go back over here. You know, I'm going to just look for the date. Jeremiah, what did I say, 22? Jeremiah 22. Let me check that date. Jeremiah 22. Let's see what the date is in 22. 
when he says this. All right, Jeremiah 22, 609 B.C. We are at 1004 B.C., about 400 years. Prophecy, God said, hey, I'm going to destroy that hell. 400 years. 400 years. America. Look how young she is. And she's already fallen away in, in apostasy, fallen away from God. You can't keep America going or God will have to apologize to everybody in Babylon time and Jeremiah's time for all that he did in judgment. If he's going to keep blessing America and give America the new Jerusalem, the, the new earth, the new heavens, and the new America, he would have to po apologize to every Sodomite and Goramite and Ninevite for their wickedness. And he's not. Upon him to cause... Oh, wait a minute. Am I in the right place? Oh, I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong chapter. No, wait, that's not what I read. Then will I cut off Israel out of the land. That's their that's their heaven. That land grant. That's what the Jews want. When is when Jesus was in the land and they're parading him as he comes into Oh hell, Hosanna! He's going to kick Roman butt. He's going to kick him out. And he's going to sit on that throne, David, and he's going to give us bread and fish all our lives. He's going to heal us of all our infirmities. We're not going to obey him, but we won't need a hospital plan. We will not need the Roman government no more and free lunches for everybody. That's what they wanted. Remember in John chapter 6, he fed them the 5,000 and he said that he went away knowing that they would make, take him by force and make him a king. And I have given them in this house, which I have hallowed for my name. So it's hallowed. It's for God. Will I cast out of my sight? And he does. He burns it. He destroys it. Babylon did a great job of destroying that. Rome had done a great job destroying it. Titus, 3rd, 70 AD. I cast out of my sight, and Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among all people. That's one of the greatest jokes around is Jewish jokes. You realize the only jokes that they have not banned so far are Jewish jokes. You can't make fun of this culture. You can't make fun of this race of people. You can't pick on this religion. You can't make, You can't have those jokes. But there's never been a ban on Jewish jokes. And some of them are funny. And you've got to be careful because they're God's people. But some of them are funny. And they shall answer. Wait a minute. Did I skip? All right. Verse 8. And, it, and at this house, which is high... That means it's it's on a mountain. Everyone that passes by it shall be astonished. Man, this place was beautiful. I remember coming by here. We came to the Holy Land experience in 992 BC, and now it's not what it was to be. And shall hiss. That's the first time hiss shows up. Hiss. Hiss. Look at hiss. A serpent. <laughs> Sorry, I just throw that one in there. And they shall say, Why has the Lord done this unto this land? Not just the temple, they're gonna look all around, the whole place is destroyed. And to this house. So they're gonna acknowledge the place has been destroyed. Now watch what the heathen are gonna answer. And they shall answer because they forsook the Lord, the Jehovah, their God. Who brought forth their fathers out of the land of Egypt. They know history. And have taken hold upon other gods. Small g. And have worshipped them. And served them. Therefore has the Lord brought upon them all this evil. Now as we study First Kings. And we move our way Lord willing to Jeremiah. Let's watch him worship other gods. Let's watch them have other worship. Let's watch them turn away from God. So when we get to Jeremiah and the temple is destroyed and the city is destroyed. We don't go, oh, what happened? His, his God is a mean God. 
God has already told Solomon. It's already recorded in 1 Kings 992 BC. This is what's going to happen, and this is the result of what's going to happen. It's a warning. Why can't the children and people of India feed themselves when they're starving to death? When they got cows and hamburgers running around? That's your God. Chop up your God, put them on the altar, and put them on some relish, put them between a bun and some pickles and ketchup, and eat it. But you're starving because you want to worship that as your God. My God says all that meat, Noah, you can enjoy it. Paul says you can enjoy that meat. As long as you can bow your head and say, Lord God, I thank you for these pork chops. I thank you that I am under grace and I can eat seafood. Thank you, Lord. And it came to pass at the end of 20 years, when Solomon had built the two houses, the house of the Lord and the king's house. Time goes by quick. Now Hiram, remember him? He's the one that gave all the cedar. He's the one that helped Solomon. Had fin furnished, that's the first time that word shows up, furnished Solomon with cedar trees and fir trees. And with gold according to all his desire. There's a lot of gold for you. Then King Solomon gave Hiram 20 cities in the land of Galilee. Well, guess who was in the land of Galilee? Jesus. We are in the area where Jesus will be. I was going to see was. Will be. And Hiram came out from Tyre. So he's got to go kind of west, northwest. No, northeast. Tyre is a city when Jesus walks. We are in the land of Naphtali and Zebulun now. Between Tyre and Galilee. We are in the time of Jesus. Not yet. <laughs> Later on. This is where Jesus will be. So he came out of Tyre. Where is he? Tyre came out. Uh, Hiram came out of Tyre. To see the cities where Solomon had given him. And they pleased him not. <laughs> Is there anything that good that came out of Galilee? Not even these cities given to, Ty to Hiram. Ew. Galilee seems to be kind of one of those areas like, no, we don't go there for our vacation this year. And he said, what cities are these which thou hast given me, my brother? Look, brother. They're not, they're not brother. They're not the same family, but that's how close their relationship was. And he called them the land of Kabul. Kabul, that means displeasing <laughs> unto this day. Anybody want to go to Kabul? You know what Kabul means? No, it means displeasing. I think we'll go somewhere else. And Hiram sent to the king six score talents of gold. That would be 120 gallons. I just, Solomon just keeps doing it. I mean, uh, King pay for all those trees and just still probably still give them the food. And that now you don't need the trees anymore. This is the reason of levy. This is mean to, to collect money. Which King Solomon raised. For the building of the house of the Lord, need money for that. And his own house, need money for that. And Milo. And the wall of Jerusalem. You need to build a wall. And Hazor and Megiddo, Revelation 19. That's our Megiddo. There it is. That's your battle of Armageddon. And Gezer. So now you know where Megiddo is. I think they're trying to bring us back to Bible times with this wall in America. Well, let me just say one thing about that wall. The Mexicans were here long before the Europeans were. That didn't cost you nothing. For Pharaoh, king of Egypt, remember him? Going up and taking Gezer. And burnt it with fire. That's what's going to happen to Jerusalem. But what? And slain the Canaanites. I thought the Jewish people were supposed to do that. Then God go in there and wipe them all. We're going to talk about that in a moment. And dwelt in the city. And given it for a present. Unto, the, unto his daughter. Solomon's wife. So Pharaoh comes up. Destroys Jesus. Says dear. I give you this land. 
Honey, I got some land from my dad. Okay, let's go build it up. Your, your father burnt the whole city? Yeah, he burnt the whole city. Well, I gotta go build the stupid place. Why couldn't you let the build it? All right, let's go. We'll build it up. Thank you, hon. Solomon built Gezer because his father-in-law destroyed it. His father-in-law was a god. Did you get what I said? You know Pharaoh's were the god king, the king god of Egypt? His father-in-law built Gezer and Beth Horan the neither. And that's like behind. And Baal, 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 that's a god, Alf, Tamor in the wilderness in the land, Israel. And all the cities of store, they had big stores like Walmart back then. The whole cities were stores. You will see that today would be these um, storage unit places. There would be these places with all these chambers and everything stored. It would be like armories. This is how much Solomon had. He had cities where he had to keep all his supplies. He had warehouses. That's what it is. He had depots. He had transportation places. There's nothing new under the sun. He would call to the to the warehouse, hey, we need this stuff down here. And they would ship it by camel, horses, for his chariots, and cities for his horsemen. All right, he went down to Egypt, got those horses and chariots. He's got a military built up, but he's in peace. It's wise to build a military even though you're in peace. And that which Solomon desired to build in Jerusalem. Book of Ecclesiastes. Whatever Solomon wanted to do, he did it. He built orchards. He built pools. He built water ducts. He built all kinds of places. You would fill in Ecclesiastes here. Whatever Solomon wanted, he, he did it. That's why it says, desire to build in Jerusalem. And just fill in the gaps. And in Lebanon. And all the land of his dominion. And that's a far dominion. And all the people that were left with the Amorites... The Hittites, I thought they were supposed to be gone. The Perizzites, I thought they were supposed to be gone. The Hivites and the Jebusites, which were not of the children of Israel. And the children that were left after them in the land of Israel, whom the children of Israel also were not able to utterly... Look how the Holy Spirit says, I told you to utterly destroy them. Look at that side note. Look at that P.S. Look at all the people are here that you did not destroy. Upon all these did Solomon le levy a tribute, a tax, a bond service. That's the first and only time that shows up in the Bible. On to this day. Why didn't he use his military strength and say, that's it. The, the law says you guys are dead. No, I can get money from them. And America will come up with these people, that these in, illegal immigrants. One day they will say, no, that's it, no more. As long as we can get money from you, come. That will be the next step. That's the Bible direction. But the children of Israel did Solomon make no bondmen. But they were men of war in peace. They were armies. They were soldiers. And his servants and his princes and his captains and the rulers of his chariots and his horsemen. So Jewish people were never put under bondage. They were made captains. They were made Jobs, employees, employers. These were the chief of the officers that were over Solomon's work. 550, which bear rule over the people that brought in the work. Four minutes, that's what that is. But Pharaoh's daughter came up out of the city of David, Zion, unto her house which Solomon had built for her. Then he did. Then did he build Milo. He knows that marriage is so wrong. That he builds a house outside of Jerusalem for her. He said, honey, when I want to come see you, I'll come and visit you. But well, aren't we married? I mean, you, you can't be in my city. Great relationship. And three times in a year did Solomon offer burnt offerings. And peace offerings. Upon the altar, which he built unto the Lord, and he burnt incense upon the altar, 
that was before the Lord. Well, look at that. Solomon is a priest, king, and prophet. He is entering into the house of the Lord, walking past the table, going past the candlestick, going to that golden altar. He's getting some incense, and he's burning it for the Lord. He's walking up to the brazen altar and says, I got this sheep, plop. And God has not given him leprosy. God has not sent fire down. So like his father, he's king, priest, and prophet. Not many men can say that. So two great men in the Bible who are a type of Jesus Christ, David and Solomon. Types don't go all the way. Now Solomon's going to fall for other women. Jesus won't do that. And yet, is not the bride of Jesus Christ made of men who, who worship all the other gods? Are not the bride of Jesus Christ come out of all those areas that Solomon married into? Yeah. And King Solomon made a navy. That's the first time that shows up. Navy of ships in Ezra Geber, which is beside Elah. Of the shore of the Red Sea. Look how far he's down. Red Sea. In the land of Edom. Well that tells you where Edom is. Red Sea. And Hiram sent in the Navy. Here's this guy again from, from Tyre. And Hiram sent in the Navy his servants. Shipmen. That's the first time that word shows up. Shipmen. And that shows up in Acts again. They had knowledge of the sea. So we call them mar mariners. We call them sailors. With the servants of Solomon. So they're together in this navy. And they came from Ophir. They came to Ophir. And fetched from thence gold. 420 talents. And brought it to King Solomon. And later on we're going to realize. They're going to bring all kinds of things. Including apes and peacocks. Weird little note in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> apes and peacocks. 